Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Dan Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, today I'm going to be taking a look at Tuesday Night Games Mothership. Mothership is a sci-fi horror RPG. Uh, it came out a couple years ago and, and actually it came out to you know quite a bit of uh, critical acclaim. Uh, it had won some, some awards and I first became aware of this game a, a couple of months ago. Uh, when I was looking around for different sci-fi uh, RPGs to get into, and this one kept on coming up. And so I was like, all right, let me take a look at it. Now, back then I had the the option of buying it through uh, drive through RPG, which is, it's still there, or going direct to, uh, direct to their webpage, which is ultimately the way that I had gone about doing it. So I picked up the, I picked up the soft cover, and uh, I believe combined the soft cover plus the PDF uh, was like fifteen dollars, so you you really couldn't um, I couldn't go wrong. The other thing that I wanted to mention about um, why you want to get the soft cover is if you do just purchase the PDF and then you print it out, uh, this game booklet is a lot of you know, very compact, you know, dense uh, writing and, you know, backgrounds are, are all in gray and everything. You are going to use a massive amount of ink printing this thing out. And so you're, you're probably better, considering the cost of ink, you're probably better off just spending the, the $15 on, on getting the soft cover and the uh, PDF along with it. So... Without further uh, chatting on that, I am going to switch uh, screens here and go to the go to the PDF and and show you that. So let's switch here, and here we have the PDF. Very very interesting fine line artwork um, that I you know really like. I really enjoy it. And again, it lends itself to that um, that feel, that that horror sci-fi feel of it. It starts off with its weapons, and this is like one of those very ink-intensive pages, like I was talking about. Um, and actually, I can actually make this a little bit bigger for you. So you have combat shotguns and and such. Uh, Looks like a foom gun, uh, a frag grenade, a uh, hand, a hand welder, a pulse knife, revolvers, a variety of uh, you know different weapons. So here's the basic, uh, you know, the basic uh, player survival guide, character creation, survival. Crisis checks, food and water, oxygen, and uh, earning credits. Combat system, weapons, and and all of their, you know, work or you know, loadouts and stuff. Armor tables, your equipment table, D one hundred trinkets, D one hundred patches, and I'll talk about those a little bit. Hiring mercenaries, stress, panic, and resolve. So there's panic checks and then there's resolve. Um, you know, when shall I roll for panic and then resolve, you know, how do you either recover from it or or never, you know, fall into panic. Space travel and hyperspace. And so everything you need to know about, um, about ships and space travel. The basic ship classes table, ship design, ship weapons, then ship to ship combat, experience and then leveling up all right so um I, i'm just gonna make a a point here and and basically say that when i look at a sci-fi actually let me let me come back to that when i look at a science fiction uh, rpg and it is a space-based science fiction rpg where you're you're on ships for a good portion of of the time if the game doesn't have a 
either a ship modification system or a, uh, a ship combat system or a ship design system, to me, that, um, that RPG is just not fleshed out enough. Um, I would not, I would not play a science fiction space-based RPG unless it has those elements built right into uh, its systems. So, you know, it's just a pet peeve of mine that, uh, to me, that's what makes a complete game uh, for this genre, whether it's a horror genre, you know, sci-fi horror genre or not. Um, I just want to see that in a game. So I'm going to switch back over. So, character creation and the system itself is very simple. All right, so everything uses the D10s. So uh, that, that's from attributes to, um, you know, to your, your combat saves, to your, uh, to your skill checks. Everything is using just a D10. And so it goes right here for each of your stats. You're going to roll 6 D10. And uh, the average is roughly, you know, 30 to 35 or so is the, uh, is the average. They tell you right away, don't get too upset if you are, you know, if you have skills that are, or, or attributes that are below average, um, you know, they're, they're not as important as possibly other systems that you might play. So then you pick a class. And there are, so there, there's, uh, actually, let me go back. So the attributes, you have strength, speed, and intele uh, intellect, I'm sorry, and combat. And then your classes, you have teamsters, scientists, androids, and marines. And each one has a different, uh, a different set of saving throws. Uh, and each one has a different set of, uh, of skills that are considered their, their skills that they begin with. And then a number of skill points that they can spend uh, right from the start. So you roll the 3d6, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 6d10, and for each of your stats, and then you choose your class. Going to the next step, um, mark down your starting skills and spend your starting skill points. So trained skills will cost one point. Expert skills, which is the next level, will cost two points. So if you wanted to start off a character with an expert skill, um, which is a 10% bonus, then they would begin by spending three points to get there. And then a master skill is uh, costing three points. So if you wanted somebody to begin with a master ability they would have to spend a total of six points. Now, none of the classes start with that. And so the most I've seen is that you would be able to possibly have an expert skill in one, in one area where you began with the first one already fulfilled. Take notes on how your class deals with uh, stress and panic. So they each have their own saving throws based on, on their class and then further modified by your, um, your attributes. So uh, your stress starts with two. Your resolve starts with zero. Your maximum health is two times your strength. And your starting credits is uh, 5d10 times 10. Now they put the uh, character sheet here and... I am going to, I know there's a way to rotate these things. Let's see. Um, I'm just not remembering how uh, you rotate them. Let's see. Ah, I should have looked that up. This is where this comes into... Uh, into use. Let that uh, graphically get caught up. So here we have a character and uh, this character here has a stress of 2, a resolve of 0, a health of 78, 
Strength is 39, 31, 26, and 30 for the classes, uh, for the uh, attributes. So you can see at least one of the attributes. Let me see if that zooms in a little bit better. I'll get clearer. So the intelligence score is the only one that is slightly below average. But as I said, don't get too hung up on that. When we go to the starting skills here, yeah, let, let's see if I can get this a little bit clearer for you. There it goes. There we go. So this particular character has a zero G as a skill uh, starting off. Mechanical repair. And then for this character, they brought up that mechanical repair to uh, vehicle specialization. So there is the expert skill. So they went from just a 10% uh, bonus to a 15% bonus in that particular area. And then this character here has piloting and astrogation, also at the expert level. They have no skills at mastery. And so you can see that this, this character here is pretty, you know, is pretty well developed and starting off, you know, at a, still at a low level. Let's go back to that desktop. So go back to here, to the PDF. So rolling dice, you roll the uh, X number of uh, D10s to determine if you're successful or not. Uh, you roll them together, so 2D10 would give you between 2 and 20, obviously. Uh, when you're doing skill checks, you're, you're, it's a percentile. So you're rolling your your tens and your you know one hundreds, or your tens and your uh, individual sorry your smaller digits. The way that uh, the way that you determine critical hits and failures is kind of interesting in this. So uh, any time that you roll doubles on the D percentile, so a fifty five, a twenty two, and a ninety nine, a seventy seven, and so on. Uh, is either a critical hit or a critical fail uh, failure, depending on if you've um, if you've made your base roll. So let's say you're doing a strength check and your uh, your strength is a fifty. Well, if you roll an eleven, a twenty-two, a thirty-three, a forty-four, all right, you are going to get a critical success. If you roll the fifty-five a 66, a 77, an 88, or a 99, you are going to have a critical failure. All right, so once again, it's an interesting system. I've never seen that before, uh, to be honest with you. So that that's, you know, pretty cool. It's always nice to see a slightly different take on, um, you know, on critical hits and, and critical failures, uh, and just the fact that they have them. Uh, is also a, an interesting thing. Uh, it's always something I like to see in a game system as well. So a critical hit beats the red success even if the critical hit is a lower roll. All right. Um, if your critical fail your roll, your opponent wins. The opponent check automatically even if they failed their roll as well. All right. So uh, and that's another interesting you know, comparison. So even though we, we both might have failed our, our roles, the, um, if I failed critically and the opponent did not, then uh, the, po the opponent's uh, failed check becomes a success. All right, so that's, that's pretty good too. If you both succeed, a tie uh, and tie, you reroll. If you both fail, the situation gets worse. All right, so fairly simple system uh, to understand as far as the dice rolling is concerned. 
Uh, and, and, and the percentile die system is very, very simple to understand. You have a base number, and if you roll below it, you, you've succeeded. If you roll above it, you've failed. Uh, pretty simple stuff. Trained skills are a, uh, untrained skills, I'm sorry, is a plus zero to your percentage. Trained skills, you get a plus 10. Expert skills, you get a plus 15 to your rolls. And mastery, you get a plus 20. So obviously, as you start becoming much more um, proficient in your skills, you're going to get higher bonuses. And that's partly why they said, don't worry so much about your, your attributes, because you do have the potential of gaining skill and becoming, um, you know, having those results become a lot easier to achieve, especially once you start hitting like mastery level and you're adding 20 points to your, your chance. Here are all the list of uh, trained skills that you can have. Here are expert skills. And, and on that chart on the character sheet, you could see how, um, you know, it broke them down. And here you have it. Um, so if you were, you know, looking here, let's say driving. So driving would be trained. Vehicle specialization would be expert. And then command would be mastery if you were following this chain. And there are, there are other connections to get there as well. Um, I don't see very many. So th this one right here, the only way to get the Xeno so, uh, so Tracism is to start with archaeology, mysticism, and then you get there. So some of these, there's only one way to get there. Uh, one path to travel to get there. Uh, surgery looks like it's the same. Um, first aid, pathology, surgery, although you could go from pathology to xenobiology from this same connection. So pretty cool. Um, pretty cool system. Saves. You have sanity as your ability to explain away logical inconsistencies in the universe rationalize and make sense out of chaos, detect illusion, mimicry, and think quickly under pressure. Fear is how well you can cope with emotional trauma and covers not only fear, but also loneliness, depression, and other emotional surge. Body is your reflexes and how well you can uh, resist hunger, disease, and other Organisms that might attempt to invade your inside, uh, your insides, okay. <laughs> and uh, armor is how resistant you are to damage sustained during combat, whether that be through bullets, claws, teeth, etc. So you have just four types of saves that you have to uh, deal with. You have stress, you have panic rolls. If you critically fail a save, you have to make a panic roll. So if you fail a stress roll, you have to make a panic roll. Rolling a critical hit, however, could mean a wide variety of things depending on the context. A critical hit on the sanity save may grant some further insight into the strange alien artifact uh, you've encountered. Or in the case of an armor save, give you a chance to counterattack. All of these cases are ultimately up to the Warden. So the Warden is the name of the Game Master or Dungeon Master, if you prefer that. Crisis checks, food and water. So it is a pretty in-depth, you know, uh, skill check game system, you know, that I really like. Um, has very D10... A D10 hit location, which I use virtually in every game that I play. Um, unconsciousness and death. All games need it. Just my my own personal view. Um, except for Tune. If you're playing Steve Jackson's Tune, you don't need death. Automatic weapons. Weapons in combat. Uh, so combat guns. Specialty guns. So they do have quite a bit of uh, equipment here. They have armor suits and, uh, and hazard suits. 
advanced battle dress, standard crew attire, equipment lists, Starting layouts and credits are, let's see, so trinkets. So these are things that you roll in the very beginning, and um, you roll your trinket randomly. It has no mechanical advantage to it, but it does just kind of describes your character a little bit better. So let's look at 22. I just pulled that number off the top of my head. So a bartender's certification expired. So this character would have a 22... Um, you know, a bartender cert certification uh, that is just part of your character's background. And let's take a look at 22 as far as patches are concerned. So pinup, uh, riding missile. So they have a, a pinup poster, a picture of someone riding a missile. All right, so that's, uh, you know, just something to help flesh out your characters a little bit uh, you might come up with a decent backstory on that. Let's uh, scroll past the hiring mercenaries cost. You start filling up your your mothership's uh, crew with us here. Yeah, th this game can be played with a with a single player and then a cast of crew, um, where they're making the decisions of all their crew and such. And so if you do have a very small group of players, you can certainly play this game uh, by just using mercenaries to fill in some of those gaps. They go into stress. How do I gain stress? The primary way you gain stress is by failing a sanity, fear, body, or armor save. When this happens, you gain one point of stress. How do you relieve stress? Getting rid of stress is a lot like healing from rest. Whenever you rest at least six hours, you can attempt a fear save to relieve your stress. And then here's the results of, of stress. And so here's the panic effect. Resolve is your ability to ignore and cope with your accumulated stress. And that will affect your roll on your panic roll. Buying a ship. Uh, so we're getting into the spaceship. Uh, spaceship travel. Basic ship classes. Repairs. We go through all the different types of, of ships here. They have required modules. And then notes for each of them. And here is where you can start to uh, create your own ship. And it'll say what, what type of ship it is, what its required modules are. And then you just start filling in what it has, how much it has, uh, or what level or quality that uh, each of those systems have. So here, we'll take a look at cargo hold. Uh, 100 cargo, 10 cargo holds, and the, um, I have to make this larger, I can't really make that out. And the hull, the hull cost is 10. All right, so, required modules, so human passengers, Life support modules, so 10 passengers requires one life support module, and that equals one hull point. And then when you tally everything up, you end up with uh, your total hull, and it looks like the total hull here is going to be 17. So... I'm assuming that's a fairly decent sized ship. Drawing your ship's layout so you can lay this out. So ship stats, armor is 10, combat is 20, intellect is four, speed is 10. You know, so your ships have, have very similar stats to players. So that's, that's kind of interesting. 
total number of hull, how much the how much it costs, how much is owed on the on the ship. And here they have a nice little uh, ship layout uh, drawn out. And so when we go into ship to ship combat, taking critical hits, critical fails, and armor saves. The first time a ship takes damage, I'm just cycling through some of these things here. Critical hit effects, and so you can have various different effects. Full line ship destroyed in one to ten turns. All right, so that's a pretty that's like a, a hit that just keeps on going, right? So you know you roll a ninety nine on it, and then the um, the ship is systems are going to continue to fail uh, until the ship is destroyed in 1d10 turns. Experience points gains. Uh, so if you survive the first night, you'll immediately level up. You'll reach level 2 and have two more uh, after two more sessions. All right. And surviving a session is worth 10 XP. How much do you need to level up? You need uh, 10 points to level up to level 2. You need 25 points to level up to 3. And all the way up to, you need 500 points to reach level 10. You can improve stats when you level up. By 5 and another by 3, maximum 85 when you're improving stats. Improving 2 is saves by four each maximum of 85 you can pick one minor improvement gain one resolve maximum is five remove one phobia or addiction and heal all stress so you can use uh, skill points or, or experience points to do that and you can gain two skill points so you gain two skill points. You can put one in trained and make that a cost of one. So now I have a an untrained becomes trained. Or I can take two points, let's say, and move a trained skill to an expert. Um, this goes into the primary modules for a ship and deals with all of that. This is just the character sheets and ship sheets and such. Creating a starting character, so they go through um, the skills. So they give you pretty much everything you need. And then this looks like a cheat sheet. Yes, I was going to say. Uh, this looks like a cheat sheet. So the last page is a cheat sheet. Blah, cheat sheet. So, and I'll show you on the, you know, that is on the back of the, of the booklet as well. So it's something that's very easy for you just to, plop down and, and run a copy off this, this and then just hand these out to uh, each of your players. Um, the, you know, that's the advantage of having a PDF uh, is that you can, you can print out some of the, you know, the character sheets and the ship sheet and, and those kinds of things will be very useful to print out. Um, that way, you know, not everybody needs one of the, the soft cover books as well. So anyway, so, uh, Looks like a really cool game. I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, getting a chance to actually play it. Uh, like I said, I want to play it as a player. I'm hoping to find a, a group that's actually running either one shots or, or a campaign that I can jump into. And it's a, it's a genre that I, I haven't played enough. And so I certainly want to, uh, I certainly want to jump into that. Even when I played Star Frontiers, it was, it was never a dark sci-fi horror uh, kind of gameplay. It was more of a space adventurer kind of gameplay. So I've been looking around for, you know, different RPGs, uh, space-based RPGs that, that follow this uh, particular genre. So once again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions about this game or other games that you'd like for me to take a look at, you know, please feel free to drop a, uh, drop a comment in there. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. 
I'm I'm currently working towards a uh, you know working towards a, a giveaway uh, once the once the channel gets to uh, 800 I'm going to do a random you know of all of the uh, all of the people that that comment you know and subscribe you know on a regular basis on the on the channel and then I will uh, I'm going to be giving out some free uh, free copies of either a voucher uh, where you can get a, a game uh, game booklet for ten dollars uh, with that voucher or a PDF which will be you know a free PDF uh, with the voucher uh, or a combination of both if uh, if I you know choose to do it that way as well so um, once again you know thanks for popping in I hope you enjoyed it look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen sometime soon and you know be safe out there uh, as far as you know with the you know, with COVID-19 and, and other, you know, concerns going on out there, uh, just be safe and happy gaming. All right, you'll have a great afternoon.